In this Grand Blue Fantasy Relink video, I'm going to be showing you my Lancelot build and character guide. So for those of you out there who are planning to use Lancelot in your group, or you're going to be maining him yourself when you're playing multiplayer, watch on for some useful information. Lancelot is one of the most agile characters in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. With his fast-paced combat and hard-hitting abilities, beginners will love his melee-focused playstyle. Lancelot is proficient in swordplay utilizing his signature dual swords. These weapons allow him to perform quick and precise strikes, giving him the ability to deal fast multi-hit combination attacks to enemies. Playing Lancelot effectively revolves around chaining together fast and fluid combo attacks. Learning the timing and rhythm of these attacks will allow the player to string powerful combos that can quickly stun enemies, while also dealing a large amount of damage. This is also one of the reasons why I see him as a beginner-friendly character since users will have the ability to attack enemies at high speed, while easily weaving in evasive maneuvers into combat. Let's go over his support skills or special passives first. The first one is Stiller Glance. Stiller Glance allows Lancelot to imbue his swords with ice, making him deal more damage when the combo is sustained long enough. Even though this passive takes some time to take effect, I find it manageable if you know where to position him in combat. And then you have Wilburwind. The Wilburwind passive is the best passive ability Lancelot has. This ability allows you to weave in a dodge attack or a special maneuver that can quickly transition to a skill or action. This passive allows Lancelot to pull off a perfect dodge most of the time. A very strong skill if properly utilized. Thanks to this ability, the user will have an easier time maintaining combos during combat. Now that is out of the way, let's move on to Lancelot's skills. I'll be going through each of them and providing my recommendations, as well as giving you an idea of how these skills are being utilized. First up is Blade Impulse. Blade Impulse is Lancelot's lunge attack, and this type of skill is what we call a gap closer in combat. This is pretty useful and fun to use when the target is out of range, especially for melee-focused characters. This can easily bridge the gap, and you can easily start chaining normal attack combos when its animation ends. Next is Turbulence. Turbulence, on the other hand, is a leaping strike that deals an AoE ice blast upon landing on the ground. Aside from its great damage, it's a useful skill for hitting multiple enemies, especially when fighting a horde. Also, when Lancelot leaps into the air, it will give the player the ability to dodge sweeping skills and counter with an AoE blast. The next skill on the list is Southern Cross. Southern Cross is a straightforward multi-hit attack combination. What is useful about this skill is its ability to hit multiple enemies in front of Lancelot since it has a cone-like AoE. All of his skills can be connected to his normal attacks easily, and this is one of the easiest skills to weave in when dealing with combos. Next is Blower Dolch. Blower Dolch grants a supplementary buff only to Lancelot. What a supplementary buff does is it will add additional hits on top of your normal attacks and skills. Since his attack animations are speedy, you will be dealing a lot of damage when this buff is active. Call Swinger is Lancelot's CC or crowd control skill. I see this skill as a perfect choice when playing multiplayer. This skill allows Lancelot to release a glacial trail that freezes enemies and holds them for a limited duration, unable to perform any actions. Next is Lawin and Sternum. Lowen and Sternum is the only ranged skill in Lancelot's repertoire. This looks underwhelming at first glance since you'll be thinking Lancelot's playstyle revolves around melee attacks. However, this skill is for those players who love to constantly deal damage, even if the boss is out of reach. Next is Schwertgeist. Schwertgeist is Lancelot's SBA gauge distributor. You might be thinking, why would you want to distribute your SBA gauge? Since Lancelot can continuously deal attack combinations to targets consistently, you'll be filling up his SBA gauge faster than anyone. This skill will help you distribute more SBA gauge to your allies so your party members will be ready to pull off full chain bursts in combat. The last skill on the list is Left Spiegelung. This applies a mirror image buff only to Lancelot, which nullifies incoming damage until a certain number of hits. This skill can be taken advantage of by beginners who are still adjusting to Lancelot's gameplay or just Grand Blue Fantasy Relink noobs in general. Now that we've covered all of Lancelot's skills in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, the following are my skill recommendations. What I usually run with him is Blade Impulse, since this is my gap closer and a non-negotiable skill. Turbulence is my second pick, so I have an option to deal an AoE attack or dodge incoming sweep attacks effortlessly. For the third skill, Southern Cross is what I'm using as an additional offensive skill. I am the type who loves high actions per minute gameplay, so I opted for this. The last skill in my loadout is Blur Dolch. The supplementary damage buff it provides adds a lot of value to his entire kit. You can change Southern Cross with either La Win and Sternum if you want to have a range skill, or with Cult Swinger if you're playing multiplayer. Cult Swinger lets you hold bosses for a decent duration, and your allies can take advantage of that window to get some attacks off. I prefer not to use this skill when playing single player since the CPU tends to just stand around while I'm freezing the target, wasting the opportunity. 
Also, Schwertgeist is not a bad pickup when playing in multiplayer since you're going to be the one main distributor of SBA gauge in your party if you go this route. Now that we've covered skills, let's tackle the suggested build for Lancelot in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Since his gameplay allows him to deal constant multiple hits at high speed, my main recommendation is to build him around stun power. By increasing his stun power, you'll be seeing a lot of Link attacks since it's so easy to stun enemies because of his gameplay. We'll start with Lancelot's weapon first. Since we'll be building him around stun power, Hoarfrost Blade Perseus is the best pick. This weapon will be the main source of your stun power. If you're building Lancelot around damage, the weapon Vigalta is suggested for critical hits or Knight of Ice for more attack stats. It depends on what build you're going for. When it comes to sigils, we'll be prioritizing the stun power trait and also adding some other traits that I think work best with this build. If your sigil slots are limited at the moment, prioritize stun power first. Note that the tiers of the suggested sigils in this setup are not mandatory, but the ideal ones just work with what you currently have. When playing Maniac or Proud Difficulty quests, enemies can take you down in one or two hits, so increasing your HP with health or Aegis sigils will give this build more survivability. Depending on your skill level or how well you know a certain fight, you can remove these and equip more offensive sigil types so you can enjoy higher damage. I suggest aiming for at least level 22 for the HP trait and level 11 for the Aegis trait to gain a substantial boost to survivability. And as mentioned previously, you're not required to have the same trait levels, I'm just providing suggestions for you so you know what to aim for. Equipping right sigils is more important, so just equip yourself with what you have, especially in the early parts of the game. Of course, we will still be equipping Lancelot with additional stun power to bolster his stunning capabilities. The Hoarfrost Blade Perseus is perfect for this build, and it will already provide you with insane stun power trait, levels 100 to 150. However, we need all the stun power we can get, and you will preferably reach the maximum trait level cap, which is level 45. Combo booster sigils will also work perfectly for this Lancelot build. What they do is gradually boost the user's damage for each successive hit to enemies. Characters that can do high speed attack combinations will benefit from this trait, and Lancelot is one of them. Combo booster's ideal trait should be level 20 and above to have the minimum 80% boost to damage dealt. Cascade sigils shorten skill cooldowns whenever the user hits a target. This is perfect for Lancelot as he is constantly toe-to-toe -to -toe with bosses, and you'll be seeing shorter cooldowns thanks to his attack flurries. The ideal trait level for Cascade should be level 15 and above, to have a minimum of 1.5% skill cooldown reduction per hit. Critical Chance Sigils are also advisable since Lancelot is a DPS, so we'll be benefiting a lot from the Critical Hit trait. And since we'll be increasing his Critical Chance trait, you might as well slot Lancelot with Critical Damage Sigils for more damage multiplier. Damage cap sigils play a pivotal role in increasing your overall damage when reaching end game. This trait increases your damage ceiling, so pay attention if you're not getting higher damage numbers despite increasing your attack stat. If this happens, you need to add this trait to gain more damage. With this Grand Blue Fantasy Relink Lancelot build, we don't focus as much on damage as we do on stunning, so it's not as important. However, if you do focus purely on DPS, you will absolutely need this sigil. Now that we've tackled the build for Lancelot, let's move on to his actual usage. Lancelot is actually fairly easy to use, especially his skills. In combat, your goal is to spam his normal attack flurries as much as you can since this is one of the fastest ways to stun enemies. Since we have built him as a stunner, the enemy stun gauge will fill up fast and eventually will lead to link attacks. The more you do link attacks, the faster you can access link time and even deal more damage as a group. Since we do have a combo booster trait, your damage increases on each hit and you want to try and maintain your combos to keep your damage up. Maintain them effectively, avoid using the normal dodge, and instead rely on his unique ability, Wilburwind, to dodge incoming attacks. Taking advantage of Wilburwind will allow Lancelot not to break his ongoing combo even when dodging enemy attacks. Timing Wilburwind perfectly can lead to perfect dodges as well. Using combo finishers or skills will also tremendously increase the stun gauge of enemies and bosses, so even whatever skills that are off cooldown while you're in the middle of your attack flurries. Skills should be available fairly quickly since the Cascade trait helps you reduce their cooldown through continuous attacks against enemies. In terms of party composition, Lancelot can fit right in in any party setup. He is ideal as a second pure DPS. If you build him as a stunner, it is highly advisable to include another pure DPS that is built solely for damage. Pair them with two supporting characters and you're all set. One party example would be a well-built Zeta as a pure DPS with Signo Drive to buff the entire party. Following up with Lancelot as a stunner and secondary DPS. A Grand with support skills and has access to armor break for lower enemy defenses and failing so he can provide damage mitigation. Lastly, Cagliostro for burst heals, revives, and all around buffs. Another good party composition would be Narmaya set as the main damager of the group. Lancelot for stuns and damage, and Fairy can fill in the support role this time with her all around buffs and heal regens. The last party member would be Grand set as the main support of the group, 
since he can do revives and burst heals as well. These are examples of what parties can be done with Lancelot. His role is so good that he can fit in almost any party composition. That's it for our Lancelot build and class guide. I hope you guys learned a bit about Lancelot and how to use him. And if you have more questions, you can check out our Grand Blue Fantasy Relink wiki, or you can leave a comment in the comments section below, and I will try and answer it as quickly as possible. Did I miss any tips for Lancelot? Do you have any questions? How are you guys enjoying Grand Blue Fantasy Relink so far? Let me know in the comments below.